Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here for the Member Cafe with Partners Health Management. We're going to wait just a moment for everyone to get um, into our session here today. So, so hold on just a minute and I'll share more information with you. We have a nice size group joining us today. So I want to let those numbers tick on up so we can get everybody here before we get started. All right, I see our numbers slowing up a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Ann Gluff, and I am part of the member engagement team here at Partners Health Management. Again, so glad that you're uh, joining us here today. Um, so I also have some other folks joining us today, so I wanted to go ahead and introduce our panel. So today, uh, Lindsey Green, Lindsey, you want to just wave? Lindsey Green and Sasha Bonner. They are uh, member engagement specialists. They're going to join me today in presenting all of our great information that we have for you today. And then we have also um, Mr. Michael Cortez is here to help with Spanish interpretation. He is in uh, the Spanish channel. Uh, we have some subject matter experts here with us today to help answer questions. And I'm going to tell you just in a minute about how to get those questions into us. So from our network team, we have, that's our network provider team, Danielle Clark, Beth Brown, and Beth Lackey. And we also have uh, Melissa, Melissa Hatton from our member engagement team. She is going to be dropping information into the chat. You'll notice that the chat is, um, Disabled, is that the right word? Yes, disabled for you all. Um, so, but if you have questions, I really encourage you to drop them into the Q&A. And then when we get to the end of our session, uh, Beth Brooks, who is uh, monitoring everything going on in the background here, and she is gonna moderate questions for us today, right at the end of our session. Um, so we also have Rachel Jerzak joining us. I don't see her on my screen, uh, but she is a subject matter expert uh, for uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities and tailored care management. Uh, so hopefully she'll be with us uh, for questions at the end. Um, wanted to let you know that this session is being offered in closed caption. So if you don't need this fe feature, you just simply need to hover over the live transcript and um, click hide the subtitle. So that'll disappear off the screen for you. Um, Want to remind you that we are recording this session. So please don't share any personal private information during the session. A partner staff is absolutely available to you to discuss um, something specific about your family member, your loved one. Uh, if needed, we can schedule a time to talk with you one-to-one. Uh, -one. Um, question that's always asked, are we going to be able to see the PowerPoint slides or are we sending those out? So our uh, recording and PowerPoint slides are going to be posted on our website. You can access those under the member engagement tab and we'll get that up there as soon as we can, probably a week or so before it will uh, be posted. And again, as we're talking and you're thinking of questions, please do go ahead and drop those into the Q&A. All right, so Beth, why don't we go ahead and get our slides moving and we will go forward with our topic of today, which is to give you an update on Medicaid transformation. So we'll wait just a second till we can see our slides. All right, wonderful. So there we are. Welcome to Partners Member Cafe. So let's go ahead and move forward. And so again, we are going to, to look at the Medicaid transformation update. So we went ahead and uh, moved right uh, forward to the counties we serve. So this is for those of you who may not be familiar with Partners Health Management. So we are uh, an LMEMCO, local management 
entity managed care organization. Um, and we cover these 14 counties in North Carolina. There are five other organizations like ours that cover the rest of the counties in North Carolina. So let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Partners Health Management. Again, for those who are not familiar with Partners Health Management, um, it's an insurance plan. We manage Medicaid and state-funded dollars. Uh, we have a network of providers that ensure access to care for people who, with, uh, who need mental health, substance use disorder, intellectual or developmental disabilities, traumatic brain injury, um, those that need services in that area. We are a member care organization. Uh, we provide education and advocacy uh, and support to members and families uh, receiving services in our area. Uh, we'll begin managing one of North Carolina's Medicaid Behavioral Health and Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Tailored Plan on April 1st of 2023. Um, and at that time, we'll also manage North Carolina Medicaid Direct. Um, again, covers those same populations and um, state funding is involved in that as well. So, and then moving on to the next slide, I just talking about North Carolina Medicaid managed care in general. So what is managed care? Um, it's an approach to delivering health care services through a health plan's network of doctors and other medical and behavioral health professionals. It's person-centered, whole person care. So it really incorporates the whole person from the mind to the body, uh, mental health, physical health, um, all of the other populations I've mentioned, intellectual and developmental disabilities, substance use disorder, traumatic brain injury. Um, and you, I am sure that you all know, and if you don't, part of the first part of Medicaid transformation began on July 1st, 2021, the standard plan. And that's when prepaid health plans began serving beneficiaries. And our next step again is uh, the tailored plan will launch on April 1st, 2023. Um, so now I am going to pass the, the mic over to Sasha, Sasha Bonner. She's going to share some more information about the, uh, the health plans. Good afternoon. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at North Carolina Medicaid health plan. The Taylor plan rolled out in July of 2021 and serves most families and children, pregnant women, and people who are blind or disabled and not receiving the standard plan rolled out. I mean, not receiving, I apologize, not receiving Medicare. And that is managed by WellCare, Healthy Blue, Amer Health Caritas, Carolina Complete Health, and United Healthcare of North Carolina. The tailored plan serves people who have significant mental health needs, substance use orders, intellectual and developmental disabilities, otherwise known as IDD, or traumatic brain injuries. TBI. This includes innovation waivers participants and those waiting for innovation waivers. TBI waiver participants, ICF, IDD, and state-funded residential recipients. North Carolina Medicaid Direct has been operating for several years, and it will remain in place for people who receive both Medicaid and Medicare, except for innovation waivers recipients, medically needy, and other noted, and other um, individuals needing additional assistance. For some, for some, this temporary until pro, this is temporary until programs are available. For example, the state is developing a program for children and youth are in foster care. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians option is noted here as well as federally recognized tribal members and individuals who qualify through Indian Health Services. You go to the next slide. Medicaid members can move between plans when, they, when their needs change or increase. So that is letting you know that nothing is permanent. And we know that people change, needs change. So we want to make sure that, our, um, that you are being provided with the assistance that you need at that time. Um, for example, members move to different counties requiring a transition to another MCO. Sometimes it's right across the state line, I mean the county lines, maybe next door. But if you are being serviced by another MCO, you have the ability to change and transition. Members have increased needs 
making them eligible for enhanced behavioral health services. Another, one, another example would be Medicaid status change from Medicaid direct to tailored plan or standard plan, as well as Medicaid eligibility changes. Partners Health Management has a transition of care team that will help make the transition between plans as smooth as possible. In addition, provide that education that you may need just to get a better understanding of your options. There is a request to move form that anyone can submit. However, your provider or your health plan is the quickest path to the trans transition of care team. If you have any additional questions or you need assistance, contact the enrollment broker. And you can go to the next slide. Perfect. Now let's look at um, partner tailored plans. So let's look at the plans that partners and other MPOs will manage. The tailored plan. The tailored plan covers managed care for our most vulnerable citizens. It covers the for un, it covers uninsured and underinsured with state funded services that are available. It manages physical health, mental health, substance use disorder, intellectual development, developmental disabilities, and traumatic brain injuries, as well as pharmacy care, vision care, and includes wellness programs. Medicaid Direct is how Medicaid is currently operating now. Behavioral health, which includes IDD, TBI, mental health, and substance use disorder. It is managed by partners, the current LME MCO. Physical health is a fee-for-service. This means the medical providers bill Medicaid directly. Partners and other MCOs will continue to manage behavioral health for individuals in the Medicaid direct plan. You can go to the next slide, please. North Carolina Tribal Option. The North Carolina Tribal Option is its own plan. Tribal Options is its own plan and it's a part, it's a its own plan apart from standard plans and tailor plans and NC Medicaid direct plans. It provides primary care and care management for members of a federally recognized tribe of those or those eligible for Indian health services. Elig eligibility for Indian health services is rare. For example, when a woman is not part of a federally recognized tribe and becomes pregnant by a federal tribal member, that woman and child, when is born, is automatically protected under the tribal option. Okay, good afternoon, okay. everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Taylor plan delay. The North Carolina DHHS has decided to delay the start of Taylor plan until April 1st, 2023, to allow the Taylor plans more time to contract with additional providers to support member choice and to validate that the data systems are working appropriately. Through March the 31st, 2023, partners members who will be eligible for the Taylor plan will continue to receive their behavioral health services, their intellectual developmental disability and tra traumatic brain injury supports through partners and their physical health and pharmacy services through North Carolina Medicaid Direct, just as they do today. Next slide, please. Our new timeline from the shape from the state shows a soft launch of the tailored care management plan beginning on December the 1st, 2022. A new choice period for primary care provider selections begins on January the 15th, 2023 through February the 15th, 2023. And I'll share a little bit more about the choice plan in just a moment. The tailored plan launch will begin on April the 1st, 2023 and the 1959 options is noticed here as well, but it currently shows it's a start date of 12-1-22 launch date. However, we understand that the launch date for the 1959I options will be pushed to 2023. A little more information about the tailored plan choice period. This delay will enable us to continue to expand our network of physical health providers, if you've already contracted uh, partners and made your choice, 
you do not have to do it again. The members will be assigned a primary care provider based on the location, their past services, and if they do not contract partners or MCO during this choice period. The tailored care management choice period has ended. Members will receive a mailing indicating their tailored care management selection or assignment soon. If they are not happy with the assignment or selection, they have the option to make a change. All changes should be made by contacting partners via phone or submitting an online form to access the online form, create an account in our partners member portal called Member Connect if you haven't already done so, and then select the appropriate form. Tailored plans will be whole person care with the delivery of physical and behavioral health through one plan. The person is placed in the center and surrounded by a care team based on their needs. The care teams may look different from each individual. As you can see from this visual, care teams are made up of clinicians, service providers. Uh, to Zoom, enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Pharmacists, family members, caretakers, social workers, and our teachers. Some care teams will be large and others small. Some may change over time. It is all based on the individual's needs. Next slide, please. The tailored tailor care management soft launch will begin December the 1st, 2022. So in a nutshell, that means that the tailored care management will start, but not the tailored plan. More people than ever will have care management available. Member choice is a critical component of the tailored care management with the ability to select the tailored care management agency of their choice. Now I will turn it over to Ann and she's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the 1915I option. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, okay, so the 1915I option. So what does that mean? Uh, one thing I want to tell you is that, that the 1915I option is not part of the tailored plan, but it is something that is, is um, a, a list. It's a group of benefits, which I'm going to tell you uh, more about, that are going to be available, you know, and it's, it's close to when the tailored plan comes out. So right now, as Lindsay mentioned, we had a tentative launch date of 12-1, but we're understanding from the state that it's going to be pushed out, but we don't have a specific date yet for that. Um, the tailored plans and North Carolina Medicaid Direct are going to uh, operate the 1915I option, and the 1915B services will transition to the 1915I option as we transition. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide, uh, Beth, and we'll talk a little bit about what those services are. So taking a look here, we have supported employment, community living and supports, and respite care. Um, some you're familiar with, some you might not be. So supported employment, you can see that it is a service for individuals who are 16 years and older, uh, with an intellectual or developmental disability or traumatic brain injury who needs support in obtaining and maintaining competitive employment. And of course, that they desire to be employed. Community living and supports. So if you're familiar with the Innovations Waiver, uh, this is a service that's part of the Innovations Waiver. The 1915I option, community living and supports will mirror that service. It focuses on a attaining and practicing skill, uh, provide supervision for individuals who can complete an, an activity to the ability of their independence. Um, and this service is for ages three and over who have an intellectual or developmental disability or a traumatic brain injury. And then respite care, I think most of us are familiar with respite care. That's also part of the 1915I options. One ad that I didn't mention uh, at the top with supported employment is also a, it's available for those with an SED, which is a severe emotional disturbance. And that is also true for the respite care as well. And again, possible delay in the launch, but we're not sure exactly when um, the launch date is yet. So 
we go on to the next slide, tell you about a few more services. We have community transition and individual and transitional supports. So community transition. This is for adults who are moving from their own home and typically uh, moving into their own home, I'm sorry, an apartment, a, a house, whatever type of living they're moving into, but they're moving from a controlled, a more controlled living scenario, such as a facility, a group home, an institutional setting, et cetera. So this enables individuals to get some assistance with startup expenses to get um, moved out into the community. And then individuals uh, and traditional, excuse me, individual and transitional supports. This is a uh, supports um, to include acquiring, retaining, and improving self-help, socialization, adaptive skills to be successful in employment, housing, education, and community life. So really to help individuals um, get a, um, more adapted to community life. So it's for individuals 16 and up with severe mental illness. So if you're looking for more inter in information about the 1915 I option, there's a, we a website right there on the screen that I sure that Melissa is going to drop into the chat for you. So I encourage you to jump there for more information. So the next thing I wanted to share with you is communication. And what you see here are a list of notices that will be mailed out to members. Um, the dates we have here are approximate. Uh, so that first one is the tailored plan delay. And that letter did go out in the mail. Many of our members have received that letter this week. The next mailing that's gonna come out is gonna come from Partners Health Management and it is about the tailored care management. So those who are eligible for tailored care management, are going to receive a letter indicating um, who their tailored care management entity is. And that would be the one that they selected, or if they didn't select, it would have been assigned to them. And again, these dates are approximate. So it looks like the middle towards the end of the month of November is when that letter is gonna go out. The next one is gonna be when we're getting ready to transition into tailored plan. So this is slated to go out at the end of January. It's gonna come from the North Carolina Enrollment Broker, um, indicating who's, um, you know, people that are in the tailored plan. And then last, but certainly not least, those that are in the tailored plan uh, are gonna get a welcome packet and their member ID cards. Um, that's gonna come from partners and it is slated to go out um, mid to end of February to the first of March. Um, so again, it goes through the US mail. So those of you who are providers, make sure you're, the clients, your members are aware to be uh, watching those mailboxes so they, they know that things are coming. All right, so next I wanted to talk a little bit about the member and recipient call lines. Um, these are our lines now are going to split out to better support our um, members and recipients. So that first one you see, the member and recipient services line, um, that is the number that we have now that covers both behavioral crisis, health crisis and our member and services support. Um, as we move forward, um, the behavioral health crisis line is going to split out. It's going to have a different number. Um, we're anticipating that to begin in late February. That's under consideration right now. And the other lines um, are slated to go live uh, at the beginning of March. So we have the nurse services line, the pharmacy line, and the provider services. And you can see all the days and times that we'll, these will be active and um, collars for each one of those lines as we move towards the tailored plan. Um, our next slide 
If you need more information about what we're sharing with you today, you have questions, concerns, these are different places that you can go to. So the first one at the top is the North Carolina Medicaid Ombudsman. So the Ombudsman program helps North Carolina Medicaid and North Carolina Health Choice members understand the Medicaid program and the changes that are happening um, throughout the state. So you can reach out to the North Carolina Medicaid Ombudsman uh, with questions. Uh, if you're having trouble accessing things, getting connected, uh, they can connect people to resources such as legal aid, social services, housing resources, food assistance, and other programs. So that's the North Carolina Ombudsman. The North Carolina Enrollment Broker, they are there to help with um, enrollment in the different plans. So they're a third party organization. So that makes them unbiased uh, towards any one of the plans. And so they're there for enrollment counseling to the beneficiaries. They can help a member choose a health plan. They can help you look at information that makes you eligible for one plan or another. So the North Carolina Enrollment Broker, Choice Counseling and Enrollment. The next is North Carolina Medicaid Contact Center for Providers. So that's a uh, website and phone number. Um, and then of course your local DSS. You can find your county's local contact information if you don't have it by utilizing that link right there. You're gonna be able to find your county and get the phone number to your local DSS. And then of course, um, last but certainly not least is uh, Partners Health Management. You can reach out to uh, the member call line, our member and recipient services, or to member engagement, which I'll show you that number in just a moment. So our member engagement team, um, we are available for members and families to answer questions, uh, provide education, uh, we mentioned earlier, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one time with individuals and families to help them understand the changes. We talk to members and families who don't quite know which way to go. They know they have something going on with a family member and they need some help. So that is what we are here for uh, in member engagement. So you can reach us by calling member engagement at 704-884-2729. You can also send an email to um, questions at partnersbhm.org and reach out to us that way. Uh, another place that you can reach out to us is through our member portal. We talked about that last month at Member Cafe. That's Member Connect, and that can be accessed right from our um, Partners Health Management website. Upper right corner, Member Connect. Trying to check my time here. So I do have a few more minutes. So let's talk about, I wanna make sure we have time for questions. Um, one thing I wanna share with you is our PIX Health mobile app. Uh, if you haven't tried it, I really encourage you to check it out and to encourage your family members and the members and clients that you support. So the PIX Health app uh, helps you monitor physical and mental health. Um, uh, you can download the app to your mobile device by going to um, highpix.com. The app enables you to interact with um, Pixar. You can see that uh, cute little guy on the right side of your screen, um, and he provides helpful tips for a healthier life. Um, so the Pix app, Health app really focuses on daily mood and wellness, really focuses on loneliness. Um, there are quick assessments that you can take in there uh, to help you, the individual, know where you're at. And uh, Pix Health also has a compassionate call center that you as an individual can reach out to, and they can reach out to you based on how you are responding to um, assessments. Um, when uh, folks are connected by the compassionate call center, uh, they let us know here at Partners, and we reach out to you as well to make sure everything is okay. We want to make sure that you're connecting to services if needed, and um, we're providing you all the support that we can. So that's PIX Health.
All right. So one thing I wanted to let you know um, is that if you are, um, so who do you call? If you're currently receiving services through partners, if you have a question and you have a care manager, that's going to be um, one person that you call here in partner at partners. But if you're currently receiving services, your provider agency is your first responder in a crisis. So you want to reach out to them first. Um, again, I mentioned your care manager, if they're assigned to you. Um, but if you're not in services, as I mentioned just um, a few slides back, uh, member engagement, we're here to help you with resource information. Um, that same phone number, 704-884-2729. You can also email us. Um, and you can also, if you have any other questions or concerns, you can reach out to our member and service, member and recipient services line at 188-235-HOPE or 4673. And before we open for questions, there's just one last thing that I want to remind you about. This is something that's really important, that you stay in touch with us and keep your contact information up to date. All of those communications that I mentioned to you, it's really important that we have the right mailing address for you, that your Department of uh, Social Services has the right mailing address, because when the state sends out information, that's where it comes from. So you want to contact, if you're moving, something is changing about your mailing address, you want to contact your local DSS to update your information, and contact us here at Partners. So if you receive state funds, um, you want to contact Partners Access to update your mailing information and phone information. So presentation wise, um, that's what we have for you today. So right now, what I'd like to do is open it up for questions. I can see we have a few questions in the Q&A and um, Beth is going to moderate those questions for us. So I'm gonna give our panelists just a moment to get prepared to be back on camera. And then I will stop sharing. Okay, so our first question that we have is if a patient has a diagnosis or service need that would qualify them for either the standard or tailored plan, what is the deciding factors that determine which they end up with? I can answer that one. Um, so the determination is based on the diagnosis, as well as the utilization of services history, um, in addition to other factors. So what is the service that um, is medically necessary for that member right now? Um, so there are a certain set of benefits that are only available in the tailored plan. So if, if somebody needs those services, then that would tip the scales and they would need um, to transition to tailored plan. Who determines this is the enrollment broker. So um, the NC Medicaid enrollment broker makes those clinical decisions about where you want to go um, or where the member should go. And um, certainly what is desired from the member weighs into that. So there can be a request on the behalf of the member or the guardian um, for a certain plan, tailored plan or standard plan. Can I add something to that, Allison? Sure. Okay, so in the tailored plan, um, individuals who are currently participate participants of the innovations waiver will automatically be in the tailored plan because they are eligible for those enhanced services. And then of course, it's anyone who, um, has a more severe and persistent mental illness, a uh, traumatic brain injury. It's all about who is, as Allison said, who is eligible for the, the more enhanced services would go towards the tailored plan. Thank you, ladies. Get my questions back up here. So our next question is, what additional benefits for an older adult with SPMI on Medicaid Direct, what benefits are they, are they 
not eligible for now. Let me tell you direct that they are not eligible for now. So what first comes to mind and somebody else can weigh in is tailored care management might be available to them um, within Medicaid Direct, as well as um, it is available for tailored plan members. So it, it just depends if they meet that criteria need and aren't getting that care management elsewhere. Allison, that is what I was going to echo, is that additional benefits that may be available would be that tailored care management will go live on December 1st, while the tailored plan will go live on April 1st. That will be a benefit for those Medicaid direct members on 12-1. Thank you so much. The next question is, are those currently receiving B3 services and waiting for 1915I option to go live? Are they eligible for care management on 12-1-2022? I can try to take that. That's, um, hi, I'm Rachel Jerzak, Assistant Director of IDD Care Management here at Partners. Thanks for joining us today. So individuals that are currently receiving B3 services, they will continue to receive those B3 services until the 1915I option does go in place. And yes, they are eligible for tailored care management on 12-1 um, as long as they have their Medicaid and continue to meet that eligibility. Thank you, Rachel. The next question, will, pro will providers be permitted to access nurse services and pharmacy services? Could we get some clarification on that? I mean, the members will have access to a 24-7 nurse advice line um, through partners on 4-1 if they're tailored plan members, um, and also pharmacy services that are managed by partners. Um, but I, I'm confused about the um, provider piece of it. And in addition to what Allison is indicating is that um, the member, as Allison said, will have access to those services. We are also, in addition, building the network for the physical health side, which is inclusive of um, nurse practitioners, primary care practices, OBGYN, all of the specialty areas, as well as speech, OTPT, that will be part of our network for tailored plan members that providers would then be able to see that Beth Lackey is um, receiving their medical services from ABC PCP. So that network will include both the physical health services as well as behavioral health services as we go live with tailored plan. Thank you very much. Next question is how, how do we find out who our case manager is? So if you currently have a care manager with partners and you're unsure who that care manager is, maybe there's been some changeover in that, you can certainly try to reach out to partners, um, either behavioral health department or the IDD department, whichever one you're in and find out who the assigned care manager is right now. For tailored plan care management or tailored care management, the information about who you will be um, assigned to or who you have chosen um, and the contact information will be forthcoming in those letters that should be coming out in November, in the mid, mid to later part of November. Thank you, Rachel. 
Next question is, when the changes occurred to Medicaid, I had several clients who ran out of sessions much faster than others, depending on the plan they were placed in. Is there a way for a client to research the number of sessions available to them in the future so they can get in the right plan if they expect the need for counseling sessions in the future? Can they move out of one they are placed in to, pri to the prior to this change in spring, prior to this change in spring? So that would be a question with the enrollment broker, I think. So it's it sounds like maybe some of maybe in, in the standard plans they offer a certain number of outpatient visits, for example, and then in the Taylor plan there there are more. Say, um, you would have to meet that clinical need um, in the state's eyes, I guess, through NC Medicaid and go through the enrollment broker to request that move to the tailored plan. Um, we shared the links on one of the slides that there's a beneficiary form and there's a provider form that is uh, service related. Um, so uh, we can help you with that if you want to contact us um, and, and help you with that. Thank you, Allison. Next question, my daughter is on the NC Innovations funding of unmet needs list. What supported employment services are currently available? So currently we have supported employment services under the state services as well as B3 services. So if that is something a member is interested in, um, looking for those are the current options while they are waiting um, on the registry of unmet needs. Thank you, Rachel. Next question is, which of the numbers provided should a member call if they do not receive a letter by 1117 from partners about care management and believe they are eligible? I think they should first call their, through the numbers. <laughs> should they call their care manager first if they have one, right? Or the the care management number we don't have posted yet, so they can always call member services. Do you want we can put yeah. that number? Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's correct. I think the question is that they currently don't have care management, so I would assume they wouldn't have somebody to reach out to. But you can certainly contact partners member engagement team. You can contact. Um, the email addresses that have been provided in the chat as well about um, tailored plan questions or the tailored plan um, phone number, Partners Health Management, um, 1-888-235-4673, sorry, that's in the chat. Okay, we see, received some questions prior to um, the, the meeting today. So the next question is, my son receives both SSI and SSDI, Medicaid and Medicare. He is still on the waiting list for innovations waiver. How will the Medicaid transformation, when it finally happens, impact him? So the individuals that are Medicaid and Medicare eligible, um, dual eligible, your loved one is eligible for tailored care management through the Medicaid option. They will be um, enrolled not in the tailored plan unless they are already receiving innovation services, but they will be eligible for tailored care management. Um, Beth, remind me of the rest of that question. May make sure I'm answering it all. Okay. Um, how will this, how will Medicaid transformation impact um, her son. Yeah, I think the, the biggest message there is they will be eligible for tailored care management um, as early as December 1st. And, and 
when 4-1 comes with the tailored plan, it depends on what services they are currently enrolled in and receiving um, as far as anything else that they're eligible for. Thank you, Rachel. Next question is, since tailored care management is beginning on 12-1-22, but tailored plans won't launch until 4-1-23, who is eligible to begin receiving the tailored care management in December? So basically, currently we have innovations recipients that have care management and they will continue and it will just change to tailored care management effective 12-1. Um, all of our members that are Medicaid eligible will be eligible for tailored care management 12-1. Uh, not everybody will be enrolled in tailored care management on 12-1 or actively engaged in tailored care management. As you can imagine, this is a very large volume of members. And so if somebody reaches out to partners and says, hey, I want to engage in tailored care management, we will start there. Otherwise, we will be prioritizing um, our outreach to members to identify those that have shown interest, want to engage in tailored care management um, until we're working our way up to that. Okay, the next part of that question is who is eligible to receive tailored care management? Sure, it's our uh, members that have Medicaid eligibility um, and those will a number of different outreaches will occur. Um, many of those individuals have already gotten letters letting them know about tailored care management choice period back um, earlier in the fall. And um, if you get a letter in mid-November saying that you've been auto-assigned or have declared your tailored care management entity, then those people, of course, are eligible for tailored care management. Okay, the last part of this question is tailored care management, basically the same thing as case management. So tailored care management, and anybody else on the panel can interrupt me <laughs> and add to it as we go, um, but tailored care management is whole person care, where currently care management, as you know it, does not focus heavily on the physical health side of the member's needs. We, of course, include a lot of information about it, but under tailored care management, the physical health uh, side of it, there will be a lot more communication and coordination between um, the behavioral health services and the medical services. So we will have a lot more contact with your primary care providers, they will receive information about your services. They will receive information about your assessments. Um, so it is a more whole person care run care management model. Okay, the last question that I have that was submitted um, prior is um, provider network related. So um, our provider network staff uh, we would like more information on tailored plan trainings for innovations, IDD providers, and their administrative and direct care staff, and how that will be implemented when providers work with multiple MCOs. Sure, that's a great question. And one of the things that we have spent time working with the other LME MCOs that will be operating as a tailored plan is the ability to have that reciprocity of training. So the department really, um, in our contract with them, identified specific trainings that they wanted for all providers to have available to them. So we then met as a group to be able to share, these are the providing, the trainings that are reciprocal. So we put out a provider alert and I will put the link to that, identifying that these are available to you to take advantage of, 
Um, this is um, if you are working with other LME MCOs, that these are the trainings that you can um, share that has been happened. We are leaving it to providers to determine their staff participation in this. Our job is to make sure that it is available, but if um, we are not adding that to monitoring to look at did Beth Lackey's 75 D, uh, direct support staff have this training? That is not the intent. The intent is that it's available, that provider organizations are making that available to their staff as they need it or they already have it. I hope that answers the question. If you are a provider and you have additional questions about that, please reach out um, to your provider network account specialist and I will make sure you have that information as well. Thank you, Beth. The last um, question is more of a statement. Um, says, thank you. It would be great to get this as quickly as possible because we are in the process of updating treatment plans and requesting services for 12-1-2022. And panel, I believe that that comment was related to an earlier question about personal care services specifically. And that is all the questions that I have. If you have more, please feel free to type them in the Q&A. One more just came in. Will there be a change in how we obtain offs for our partner's patients? Will it be through the portal? And will we just need to choose tailored plan than, that, rather than Medicaid B? So um, I can answer that question, Beth. Um, we are working on an alert that will go out to the providers regarding the authorization process and what those changes will entail. That should be going out in the next um, 24 hours. We will be moving to a different authorization system to make sure that we are able to encompass all authorizations, not just behavioral health authorization. So you will be receiving that information um, if you are currently a provider in our network. You will also um, be directed to look at our provider knowledge base and provider training academy so that we offer those on-demand trainings to show you that process. You will still continue to submit your claims through Alpha Plus, but we will be moving to a different authorization system and you will be receiving that information with training in the next couple of weeks. Okay, the next question is, how will this transition impact individuals who receive personal assistance services? What services are available to them, CLS or LTCS? So I'll take a stab at this. <laughs> So uh, I'm interpreting this as a, a member that is currently receiving personal assistance services. Um, once 1915I option goes into effect, there may be eligibility um, there to receive additional services other than personal assistance, depending on whether they are Medicaid eligible or not. Um, the other service mentioned in the question is long-term community support. We currently have long-term community support services. This is an IDD service, and it is available to members that are 22 and above and um, have Medicaid and need certain assistance in certain areas. So those are currently available through our programs. And then um, community living and support right now is only available through the innovations waiver, but it will become available once the 1915I option is in place and live. 
Thank you, Rachel. Last question I have right now is, how will a provider know if an individual has been assigned a care manager and who it is? Really good question, Andrea. So uh, members that are assigned tailored care managers, uh, the tailored care manager is like the quarterback of the team and they're responsible for the communication of um, pulling the entire whole person team together. So they would certainly be in contact with the providers that are currently giving services to the members. So it is likely that the um, member will be notified of their care management, um, as well as the providers will know that there's a care manager involved and will have outreach as, as well. Thank you, Rachel. We have a few more minutes left, so please, if you have any more questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A. All right, great questions that y'all are asking, great information. Um, so last chance, if you have any other questions, drop them in the Q&A, or you can use your raise the hand um, feature at the bottom of your screen, and we'd be glad to um, unmute you so that you can ask your question. All right, so I am going, going to consider the. Oh, and we got a we got a hand raised. Okay. We do. We have, have a hand raised. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, Tanya, I'm going to allow you to talk. Okay, thank you. I think I unmuted myself. So I totally am aware that Beth Lackey said momentarily if providers has questions to reach out separately, but I feel like while I have you, I might as well ask. So some of our questions that we've not gotten clarification on is surrounding the trainings. So if an agency is, does have the targeted case management indicator or the CMH, do all the employees have to take the trainings or it just specific to the staff that provide care management or the CMH information? No one can answer that. So I'm going to open it up to the to the experts. I I don't see um, Beth on. I might my screen might be messed up, but no, she, Tanya, had to, she had to she had to drop. I'm sorry. So go ahead, Rachel, and then maybe I can help as well. Yeah, I, it, I'm going to try to answer your question. So I'm assuming you're talking about providers that have passed and are going to be certified tailored care management yes, or um, care management agencies. Yep. And though any staff that are providing tailored care management have to complete the required trainings through our AHEC, that's a statewide um, training requirement. Um, does that answer your question, Tanya? I, I think so. So I am going to assume <laughs> that obviously ACT teams, because they are, you know, an AMH within themselves, they would have to do the trainings. And then anyone that is specifically providing the care management focus under that umbrella, not that's already embedded in enhanced services. Correct? So, and Beth may have to help me with this, Beth um, Brown, but... My understanding is the ACT team specifically is not tailored care management. They have care managers embedded in the service, and it's different and separate from tailored care management. Right, but and are the, they excluded or included in the trainings that are required that now have reciprocity? Well, the really rest of question. The reciprocity trainings um, are not just for tailored care management. They are for all of the, all of the, all of the plans um, and all the providers. So I would say yes for that piece that they would be included in the reciprocity requirements um, as far as those as far as those um, trainings, which are not specific 
necessarily just to tailored care management, Tanya. Um, I think we can ask we can ask to find out a definitive to make sure that you yeah, know, Beth, that children. would be great because we're wanting to know like is every like obviously with tailored services mm -hmm. like let's say that intensive in home for example there is that's a tailored service therefore does all those teams need to do these types of trainings. And I get that we're playing semantics, but paybacks live on semantics. So we're just trying to figure out if we need to do this as a global blast or, you know, we just need some definitive answer. So is right. it just for certain staff or is it for certain services? And you're if talking an around, and you're talking an about, yeah. And you're talking about more tailored plan now, not tailored care management. Talking exactly about right. all of it. Okay. I need to know who has to right. do these trainings in order for us to be copacetic. With, well, I think um, the tailored having... care management, I think the tailored care management piece, Rachel kind of answered that for you. But the tailored plan piece, I'll be very honest, because I mean, I think you're aware too, we've been going back and forth at, um, with, with folks at the state to try to get some definitive on that. Um, as far as is that required for every single staff in the organization or whether that is not. Um, and that would, of course, include all the members of all these teams that you're talking about, these different right. service right. programs. Yeah. So I think that we don't have a definitive answer. What we have gotten definitively back from the state is that it is required for us to make them available. I know you've heard this same spiel 25 times now um, that we are required to make those trainings available for providers, but we have not. Um, had any direction on how um, how or if there will be a monitoring piece built into that um, or if that is required for all staff at, at all locations of all provider agencies to take all of those tailored um, plan trainings. So let me take it back and we will still ask Thank that you. question one more time. Um, and and the nice can... thing too, Beth, about partners is the reason I want to bring it up at this group is partners is much more understanding of what the state does to all of us so it's like you know if all so I don't want to find out on November 28th right, right. that all of this is due by December 1st and we don't all, either and we I, I know you guys know this <laughs> so it's almost like a little you know a little kindness to the provider world right, which partners right, right. is much more kind about than the others however we're just trying you know it's hard to get our ducks in a row if we don't if we don't, we don't know where the pond is. To put in a row, right? Yeah. I got you. I got so, you. Well, we thank, thank you. you for the compliment and we will, um, yeah. we will see if we can still seek again, once again, a more definitive answer on that. Thank you. All right. I know we are uh, popping over time here. Uh, so Beth, is, are there questions that we need to address or should we go ahead and um, respond to those via email? Um. Well, we've got two more, and if we'll just cut it off at those two, maybe we can get those questions <laughs> answered. Perfect. Um, it said, I just voted. What are the concerns for Medicaid monies going away? Medicaid funding is through the federal government, so um, we, we would have to address that. Um, states get different allotments. Um, they get funding for outpatient and for crisis services and what states choose to offer is um, on them. So we have been saving money and had money to reinvest over the years through managed care. And um, it is the hope for North Carolina that um, with whole person care, that there would be further savings and value and uh, for and um, outcomes for our members. So the, the biggest concern is state funding that uh, for people who are underinsured or um, uninsured, and that has depleted. And the people to talk to about that would be our General Assembly. And um, a lot of people are working, a lot of advocates and agencies are working towards making sure that there's funding available for those most in need. But um, it's, a, it's a great thought. Last question. If a member just had a plan meeting. Will I need to have another plan meeting on 12-1? So I'll try to answer that. I'm assuming that this question may be related to an innovations member that just had a plan meeting. So no, there, there would be no reason to have another plan meeting if you just had one. Um, and it, it, there are meetings, plan meetings that will be scheduled for in, individuals that are 
um, engaging in tailored care management after 12-1. So those are the types of meetings that will occur for those members, but for innovations members and um, our staff are currently working their same timelines that they've had and will continue to work those same timelines for folks. Um, so that shouldn't be a repetitive process. All right, thanks, Rachel. And thank you everybody, all of our subject matter experts that have answered uh, all of the questions. And as always, thank you so much for spending time with us today at Member Cafe. Uh, in December, second Tuesday in December, we will be doing another uh, update. As, as you all know, things keep uh, are continuing to change as we move forward. So we wanna make sure that you are up to date. And so thanks for joining us and y'all have a great afternoon. Bye y'all. <laughs>